Hey, this is Richie Rich coming at you with my show called Artistically Speaking. Hello and welcome to Artistically Speaking. I'm your host, Richard Lamaster, and I would like to welcome my very first show, very special young lady. Wan, what is happening? How are you doing? Uh, you've been making plays in the Carolina. It seems like things are popping off for you. So I wanted to get you on a podcast here real quick and catch you before you blow up. All right. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> so just give us a bit of your background. That's the, the first thing we always ask. Give us your backstory and tell us a bit about where you came from. Uh, so I'm from Anderson, South Carolina. Um, 26 years old. Um, I mean, my background, it was, I, I felt like it was pretty normal at first. Like, you know, uh, I got two parents, my parents married, got one sibling. We got a dog, you know, like I, I made good grades. I was in band, like high school marching band. I did that for like four years. I worked at Chick-fil-A. Like, just pretty regular, normal upbringing. And then when I turned about 17, I ran away from home. And I started just really living, like, you know, just really doing, I don't know, just doing all types of stuff. Some good stuff, some bad stuff. But it just basically inspired me to start writing music. Like, that's where it all comes from. Um, I was in the military for a little while. I went to USC. So just like everything that I've experienced in my life, it just made me want to make music. It, it was a, just a way to express myself. And uh, my upbringing definitely played a big role in, in, in everything that I do. So, yeah, I just feel like I had a pretty good life. Like, it, it was pretty good. Like, my parents did a good job. I tried everything, basketball, gymnastics, singing. Like, I tried everything. They always taught me to always put my best foot forward. So that's really where it came from. So that basically encompasses part of my next question, which was how that shaped your talents. You had some background in high school and music and uh, participated in choir, whatever the circumstance was. So that took care of um, that part of my second part of my question. But as a songwriter, mm -hmm. there's some things I want to know because I write music as well and kind of sharing what uh, makes you tick, that kind of stuff. So as a songwriter, which are you inspired by first, a beat or the lyrics that you put down on the page? Um, it really depends on how I'm feeling. Like, so I probably like a year ago, I start working with the Hit Bureau, right? So basically what they try to do is get song placements on TV shows and stuff like that. So they just send me beat packs and set up my studio time. So like when I'm writing songs in that type of fashion, like kind of like ghost writing type things, I always listen to the beat first, see what kind of mood the beat is putting me in it. And I come up with my chorus. And then after I come up with my chorus, I might sit the song down for a week. And then I might pick it back up next week and like, oh, yeah, this is a good chorus. And then put the lyrics on it and I'll finish the track for them. But like for me personally, like if I'm going through something like I don't know if I'm going through something with my girl or just something hard in life or I'm struggling, then I might just come up with something in my head and then I'll find a beat to match it later on. So it really just depends. You could you could do both. But I definitely I'm not a freestyle rapper like I, I really can't freestyle like that. So I'm always writing. So. Definitely writing first. I can't just go in the booth and punch in type. Well, I probably could, but I just, I haven't. Like, I like to have my songs have a lot of punch lines and stuff like that. So I really got to think about it. So I do do a lot of writing. But as far as the way I build a song, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in or what, what job I got to do. Does the beat package that you choose or that somebody runs by you, I know when I'm... Uh, a little bit more stressed it might be a little bit more edgy i've noticed that some of your yeah. projects recently have that kind of folky feel you've got a nice guitar package at the outset and then you've got a nice yeah. beat 
hitting it there. So yeah. obviously it seems like you're hitting a stride where you're in a happy place, in a, in a, in a quiet place. Yeah, definitely. I got more time to think, more time to focus. I really like instruments. Like I told you, I was in a band, even though I was only a flag core girl, like I ain't even played no instruments, but I was real cool with everybody else. Like, you know, the percussion and like just listen to the horns, the guitar, like, you know, we went a band competition. So I really love instruments. Like I really like instruments in my beat so i meet more producers that make them type of beats so like you know i'm fucking with them off top like yeah like give me some more of that like give me some more guitar stuff and, and and now i got time to really i don't know like you said i i am happier than i was like in my like when i dropped my first project you, i was i was really kind of in a sad place but now i can kind of do more so yeah I definitely feel what you're coming from about the different strides and stuff because it's just it's coming different now. Yeah, you don't. Um, it, it's not a stress indicated in your music, from what I hear. Yeah. Versus the I'm still straight though. Oh, there's. Yeah, I'm a, still straight. You got to pay yeah, bills. Yeah, still, now, don't get me wrong. A daily right. grind is a different thing. You know it does. Right. And then though, so even. Even in the most stressful times, I still can write. Like, cause like I say, it's a way for me to express myself. So sometimes I need to write. Like, if I like, I remember uh, my song "Trill Life." Um, that was about my homegirl Trill that passed away. So like, I remember like when I first wrote that song, my cousin had he she had just passed away, and maybe two days later, my cousin he was like, "Well, will you do a feature with me on this beat?" He sent me the beat, and like I heard it, and I just started crying. It's like I heard the song already. And I just needed to get it out. And it's just like, once I really get the song out, like how I'm feeling, and then I can hear it, I could play it back. But it's like, it's it's like I'm getting it out of me. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like I can release it. So sometimes my stressful times be when I write my best music. Some, some of the divine inspiration that's behind that too is organic because what you feel inside, it hits you automatically. So therefore you want yeah. to express it, especially if you hear certain music that you're like, oh, oh, I can I can kill that. You know, I, yeah. I've, I've been around rappers where they're not freestylers either, but they can sit down and write something out. And in 10, 15 yeah. minutes, right. it out of the park. Right. Yeah. In your recent offerings, the ones that I really enjoy, and one of them may not be so recent, but you were featured on it. Um, memorabilia I like it's got that folky open but also that's you in a different setting that's you in a hometown yeah. setting on a street and whether it was in Anderson or not it had that feel it yeah, that was right in front of my daddy house. yeah that was right in front of my daddy house yeah, yeah we, we went out and shot like it was like eight o'clock in the morning and like that's the first song I ever wrote though like my first time picking up a pen like writing I wrote that song I said I was turning 23, so I was 22. I'm 26 now, so that was like four years ago. But I, I love that song just because like, it's just me. Sometimes those are the best, though, that marinate over time. Like, man, I, there's a song that Nas did called Book of Rhymes, and he talks about how he's going back through his notebook and seeing what's yeah. good and what's not. Thanks. I, I love that process. That's fantastic. Right. I'm glad you shared that too, because there's a lot of people out there that might hesitate. Like, oh, I've got it in this book, and I haven't done anything with it. Man, it's gonna come. It's gonna come if yeah, you're you it. yeah, if you're true. You it it's gonna come. You got to break it back out. Now, I also like Ruger, which is something fairly new, but I really like yeah. that beat, um, and it's strong. Yeah, I like it too. Um, that beat was made by Stan. He from he's from Anderson too. Um, and that was just that was some spur of the moment shit too. Like my homeboy sent me the beat. He was like, "Man, Cam, I had this beat for a long time. I can't can't think of what to put on it." So you know, I was going to Cali and like I was just playing the beats in my headphones. I was like, "Oh yeah," just wrote the hook on it. Like I wasn't even supposed to have that much of a part on that song, but I was just feeling it, so we just kept going with it. Now, before I get to the, the next song, this is the one you're featured on, but do you have any shout outs for anybody that you work with? Yeah, oh, shout out to Hit Bureau, Curtis Lamont, HTTP, uh, shout out to Totem Enterprises. Um, 
Uh, I th- I mean, shout out DJ Nightmare, Trey Smash, shout out KG, Helix, INK, everybody, man, we working. What about your friend? What friend? Your girl. <laughs> You're not going to shout out what? your girl? Good gracious. Oh, my girlfriend? Yeah, shout out my girlfriend. <laughs> I thought you were talking about music and business. Yo, shout out my girlfriend. I love you. <laughs> The, the other I was <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I'm messing with you. So, Shylon Flowers is yeah. something that I really like that that view on that video because it has that. Let me tell you something crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something crazy, and I don't even really talk about it. Like, okay, so me and Shylon, like, I didn't even know Shylon. You know, but when I came to Greenville, you know, some people be like, "Oh, they don't really care about." getting the attention of where they at right now, like, blah, 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 they worrying about going up. But, like, when I come in the city, like, no, I'm trying to tap in. Who is hot out here? Like, who is everybody fucking with? Who getting the shows? So uh, I was working with this girl named Serene. Shout out, Serene. I was working with her, and she was like, um, what's this guy named Shylin? He, I think y'all would sound good on a, on a track together. He about to drop a project. She was like, I think it'll be a good move for you. So I'm like, okay, bet. So he emailed me the, he emailed me the song, you know, with the open verse. It took me a little minute to write it, but I wrote it. We went to the studio, laid it down. It was good. And so um, he had a show downtown Greenville at the radio room. And um, like, it was, it was like an album release party or whatever. So when um, I get to the party, my name ain't on the list. First of all, I had somebody with me, so I had to pay both of our ways. Um, when I got there, he spoke to me and everything, but then like I'm talking about, he had like ten or twelve artists had a set. Um, like I ain't get no set. Like he didn't shout me out. Like I mean, I was standing right there in the front, and he did not acknowledge me at all. And that Richard, that pissing y'all so bad, I had to leave. And I was like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not fucking with this dude no more. Like, period. So then the song started getting more traction. Like people started liking it and blah blah. But I'm just like, I'm not fucking with you because like you disrespecting me. Like, I understand you got your name, but I also have mine. And so he ended up calling me and like he apologized. We did a couple of things, and then that's how we got back on track. But like at first, I wasn't even, I was gonna mark that song out, like. I don't want to play this song or do any of that, but like, I am glad that I handled it the way I did. Cause now, you know, we respect each other. We got a good relationship, but at first, like, yeah, people was trying to play with me about that. So that that's happens in the music industry a lot. Um, yeah. You can't let it happen though. You cannot let that no. happen. Like I would never go anywhere and let nobody play with my name. Like, no. Well, and especially not when it's something like that, when I know it got some views. Yeah. I know. I yeah. Saw so I was like, nah, th- that doesn't sound right. And I'm glad you did what you did because you need to be featured and represented because you were featured yeah. on that on that particular. Yeah, and nobody will take up for you. Nobody will take up for you. Like I ain't got no manager or no big team behind me. It's just me. So I got to speak up on my own behalf. You're I can't your just manager. be quiet. Yeah, you're your own man. Yeah. So. Thanks. Here's my question to you out of your uh, work that you've worked on. Do you have any favorites in particular? Um, yeah, I got a lot of favorites. Um, I'm about to go record a song now. I think it's going to go crazy. But um, I really like memorabilia. Like, that's probably going to be my favorite song forever. Like, I don't know. It just it just reminds me of young me. And, like, even when you listen to it, you know, like, as time go on, your voice change. Like, I just sound so young, and, and I just love that song. I also like Stutter a lot. Uh, I really like Stutter because that was, like, my first song that was, like, you know, it was it was a vibe. It kind of, you know, memorabilia is kind of like a spoken word type thing, but Stutter, you could kind of play in the club. And I really like Russian Roulette. Like, that song right there, like, I don't know, we had a good time making that song, like recording the song, recording the video, everything about that was good. So they'll always probably be one of my top songs. So you kind of covered this, but um, is there something new that you're waiting to release that you're anxious about? 
Oh yeah, I'm always working. Like I'm even if I'm not dropping music, I'm still writing. Like I told you, I work with the Hit Bureau, so they always have me in the studio, which keep me on my toes and everything. But I got a couple of more singles I'm gonna probably drop this year. I'll probably drop another project maybe next year, cause I don't know. Like I'm just looking at the like the fads and what's going on right now. Like if you get your song on TikTok and it's jumping for real, you don't have to have a whole project. You can make it off a single. So as long as I got certain things in order, like you know, I got all my songs registered on BMI. I get all my all every time it's streamed, I get paid for it. So I'm I've really been focusing on the business side. And then probably like next year is when I'm really gonna start dropping, you know. See, that's the one thing, too, is before young artists get out, it's good to have content. You know, you've yeah. dropped an EP here, you've dropped an EP here. You can combine those and make one catalog or one CD of those right. particular singles. You can do how you want it, or you can fit it into a project that might be something on a grander scale. You've got all right. that, you know, already there for you. So that that definitely, and, and I kind of figured that was going to be your answer, but I wasn't sure if there was anything you had on the burner because I know you've got this upcoming event. It's called Vengeance yeah. at Velo. Can you yeah, tell us that's going to be that? crazy. All right. Yeah. I got to shout out Helix uh, for that show. So basically, um, Helix, I met, Helix, I look at him like a younger brother. So he really like rock star type shit like real live like face pain and and like he got a different type of crowd in me so uh, I actually met him at an open mic night one night and like I don't know I just watched him grow up uh, tremendously like just watched him grow so we he started doing shows and you know it's different a, a show in the club is different like I performed at a lot of clubs I mean, people like my music in the club, but it's like, that's not really what I'm going for. I'm going for more of a concert type feel, you know what I'm saying? Where the people really react and they really rocking with you. So he started doing these shows, like one show was in a barn. We did a show in a skate park. We done did shows all over the place and easily just different cities. And now like he's starting to get more and more people to come to these shows, which is how we got the opportunity to perform at the Velo Fellow downtown, which we're really excited about because we've been doing this shit like two or three years. And now it's like we can really get venues, like good venues, like we can fill them up and we can have good. We got fans like people really like it's some certain people when they see me like they excited to see me like and it's just crazy to me because I wasn't even doing it for that at the beginning. But then, you know, people start to like it. So I don't know. I just feel like this show right here is going to be real different. It's going to have a lot of energy. Um, they got Tommy Blaze performing, Helix, um, Beast Boy Slime. Like all of these people, you know, they known in Greenville. But I feel like pretty soon it's going to be, you know, we've been traveling. Like last month they had a show in Asheville. I went with them. They get a crowd everywhere. And like, even if they don't know the songs, when they leave, they're going to download them. And that's what you need. So I feel like you come to the Vengeance at the Velo, you're going to be very impressed. You're going to probably get you a new favorite song out there. You can come get you some merchandise. And, you know, I'm going to be on the mic. I host events and everything. So I'm going to have the vibes in the building. And I'm going to take care of y'all all night. Awesome. That is fantastic. Well, when? How'd we do on the first episode? You think we did all right? I think it's good, Richard. I'll come back again. All right. Well, you know you're welcome anytime. <laughs>